Alright, what's up guys? Mags here. We've got a pretty exciting video for you today. We're going to learn how to make a heat map with market order execution overlay. So to start off, I'm going to go to File New, New Intraday Chart, open up the BitMEX ticker. I'm going to make sure it is put on a lower time frame. Uh, you can use less than a minute, but we're going to use a minute for the sake of the video. We're going to change to a line on close. And then over here in the graphic settings, don't use global so that we can actually change this. Close line and change it to white. Okay, F6 to add a new study. Market depth historical graph. Once you've applied it, go ahead and go into the settings. I'm going to leave all the color and uh, aesthetic changes up to you guys. We're going to focus on what matters here. First off, I'm going to go ahead and change the volume intensity to 40. I'm going to change the graph uh, only quantities greater than. And we're going to do, uh, I change this around a lot based off what the market environment is. But for, for the sake of the video, I'm going to do 845K. And then down here at the bottom, max levels to display, drop that to 200, apply that, give it a second to load. It's an incredibly powerful tool. The downside to it is that it does store a lot of information as you can see. Um, it's loading up all these individual days. So it does store a lot. So the recommendation is that you run it in a separate chart book. Uh, as opposed to running it into your main chart book because if it does ever have issues with storing too much data and it crashes or something or uh, fails to load, it's just your heat map that's struggling to load and not your entire chart book. Um, giving that advice through experience because I've had my entire Sierra charts crash because of this because I allowed it to store too much data. All right, moving on. So now we've got the core of the heat map going. Now we're going to do one more study, F6, and it's going to be called Large Market Orders. Or large trade or large volume trade indicator volume threshold uh, we're gonna use a lower one for the purpose of the video to make sure it shows up but again this is also something that you're gonna want to change probably let's see I like to change these colors some purple for these guys I guess trying to make them contrast okay indicator size it's not relevant because we're gonna change it to do automatic anyways minimum size 15 maximum size 50 transparent draw style yes we want to drop this quantity down to 25 so it separates the two orbs so for buy and sell now you're gonna have two different sized orbs I like to put the market the uh, marker alignment I normally put on center. If you were to use certain types of charts though, you might want to put it on a side. I'm going to change the draw style to a circle. And let's load that up because I think that's it. See how it comes out. Cool. I definitely advise everybody to mess around with the individual settings, changing the aesthetics, all that stuff. Uh, the actual volume inputs, right? So the thresholds and stuff are all really important. So definitely mess around with that. And you will likely have to change it depending on the current uh, market environment, right? You know, as the environment changes, these numbers need to change too. So you need to stay on top of that. Uh, but just a brief explanation of what we're looking at here, right? So we have a one minute line chart. And these uh, blue and yellow blocks, right, are asking our bid limit orders that are on the book, right? So it's showing us where the size was, and you can see at how the larger players are putting limits either on the bid or the ask, and they're trying to move price directionally. And then you see the market aggressors with these orbs coming in, right? So I set my purples or buys and my red and oranges or sells, and um, based on how we set it up, it does different size relative to size, or it does different size of orb relative to size of order and if you want you can actually put labels on these so that it reads you the size I never do that um, but yeah you're more than welcome to mess around with that 
really cool tool. A lot you can do with it. Everyone needs to spend a lot of time messing around with it, making it suit themselves. Um, as stupid as it sounds, I think the aesthetic and the color scheme you pick really matters a lot for how you interpret what you're seeing. And um, even if somebody isn't going to just, you know, trade this, I think that it's a great tool to mess around with just for getting a feel for how order flow really works, right? So what's that relationship between the passive and aggressive order flow? And um, that's really it, right? You got to understand this relationship. So I think this is a good tool for less experienced people to, to watch that. And um, it's a cliche for a reason, screen time. The only way we're really going to learn this stuff uh, is by staring at the screen and taking a lot of notes and, you know, really being on our A game. So we'll leave it at that. Have a good one, guys.